Hey, I thought I'd do a quick update for what I'll be doing for the rest of this month. Now, I'm going to try to go in chronological order here, but I'm going to have to change scenes on the XSplit pretty often, so <laughs> I hope you'll bear with me. Uh, anyway, first thing is that I got into the Rockman X Dive beta, which uh, it is a mobile game. Uh, I'm not sure if it's actually going to play very well. Uh, from what I've seen, the gameplay actually looks quite decent, and uh, it looks like the the virtual buttons are set up like KOF All-Star, meaning that I'll be able to easily play it with a controller. Uh, this comes out, I believe, on the 12th. So I, I will be checking this out. I'll let people know how the gameplay is. Uh, it's like a closed beta, so I guess the elephant in the room is that they won't have anything about the microtransactions. <laughs> honestly, uh, KOF All-Star, it's definitely one of my favorite like uh, like service beat-em-up games. Uh, like the, the bosses, for the most part, actually stagger the... The gameplay is responsive and, you know, the, the presentation is nice, but the monetization is something I'm really not a fan of. I, I considered spending 25 bucks to get Mei Lee today, but I decided I'm going to exhaust, like, <laughs> every free possibility I have because the rates are so low. So I, I'm hoping that uh, this new Mega Man game will actually have a, a better balance and, uh, you know, if you do want to spend money on the game, you'll actually have a decent chance of actually getting something worth a damn. <laughs> But uh, I, I guess I'll find out the, the the hard way, so we'll see what happens. Besides that, hold on here. Uh, Mass Builder is going into early access on the 13th. I thought about asking for a key for it, but I think I'm just going to go ahead and buy it. Uh, I did like Gundam Breaker 3 for what it was. However, the frame rate was terrible, and uh, it just felt like I couldn't really enjoy it that much because it was barely running at like... 30 FPS. Uh, obviously, this is a PC game. I believe it is coming to other platforms. Hopefully, they'll be able to optimize it, and it won't be another <laughs> won't be another Gundam Breaker 3, uh, you know, scenario where the game is actually quite fun. There's a lot of cool customization and stuff, but the frame rate just doesn't match with the the pace of the combat. Uh, the melee combat does look a little clunky right now. What little they've shown, I actually haven't played the demo yet. I'm not even sure if it's worth playing the demo at this point because it's uh we're getting the early access release in three days. But they did release a roadmap down here, and they did mention that they want to uh, improve the melee combat. So I guess if it doesn't launch that great, it'll definitely be improved later on. Alright, well it just randomly doesn't want to show me the... Uh, <laughs> the uh the roadmap but i believe in like january or february they're planning on improving the melee combat so i'm looking forward to it they haven't said how much it's going to cost but i've got like 80 bucks in my patreon so i should be able to get it it's probably going to be like 20 30 dollars uh besides that Uh, I went ahead and paid for Luminous Avenger X. Uh, it was only 15 bucks. So I was <laughs> kind of genuinely shocked about that. I thought that they would charge a little bit more for this, but I was kind of going off the uh, the limited run games price where it's like $35 for a physical copy. So I will be playing this. Uh, I am a little bit disappointed that it seems like uh, oh, the character is not in this, uh, this art. Actually, right here, this character, Blade... Uh, it doesn't seem like they are playable, so I hope that they're uh, they're just leading us the wrong way, but I'm definitely hoping that they are, because I think Gunvolt uh, in general, just as a franchise, needs a, a melee character. Uh, Copan is definitely a lot more fun to play than Gunvolt, but he definitely still feels kind of limited. You just kind of run into them and hold the button down, which isn't terribly interesting. I definitely would like to see them just go full Mega Man Zero, like the company's roots, and uh, just have like a really full-on fast-paced melee character but it's possible that uh, they may be playable maybe when you beat the game or something they've been kind of quiet about it uh seems kind of a little bit unique to be just a just a like a regular boss bright but we'll see what happens uh other than that there's not much else uh, i was looking into maybe getting east 9 but i think that the language barrier and the price is really going to hold me back uh, I'm actually not going on vacation this month. Uh, I was not able to find a room, so uh, that's freed up a bunch of extra money for the channel. Uh, as you know, I upgraded to an RTX 2060 recently, and uh, that was kind of the brunt of <laughs> all the recording problems I was having. It turns out that the 
the uh, the SDK for NVIDIA like cards and stuff was not updated on XSplit. But uh, I have my own 1060, and I can probably get anywhere from 150 to 170 dollars for that. So it's not like I, I couldn't just sell that and buy East 9, but I, I think that the language barrier is going to be more of an issue. Uh, East 8, uh, just in general, uh, introduced a lot more like reading and like uh, more reading requirements, like on the equipment and things like that. And it looks like East 9 is actually going to move the series forward a bit. Now, one of the problems I had with East 8 was that it was still a Vita game. You know, even though they, they doubled the frame rate or on the PC version, they unlocked it. You know, like uh, the game was still heavily limited by, you know, his Vita game foundation. Like just uh, getting lost was more of an issue of just finding the correct loading zone for the place that you wanted to go instead of just being able to walk there and find it naturally. It doesn't seem like that's going to be a problem in East 9 since it's a PS4 exclusive at the time being. So I think that that will help me to uh, get through the game a lot more. The combat definitely looks a little bit better as well, but I'm not sure if I really want to drop, like, I think it's going to be like $82 to get it. And then, uh, you know, just get stuck due to the language barrier. I, I guess one of the issues right now with East fans is that there's like no plans for a localization at this time. Uh, I guess after the, the problems with East 8, all the problems they had with the localization and the, the PC port and the, the Switch port having all those problems that took months to fix. I, I guess they're trying to be a little bit more uh, careful and apprehensive of who they get to localize the games. So uh, I don't know what's going to happen there. I'll, I'll look into it. In the event that I do sell my old GPU, then uh, maybe I'll look into it. But I think that's a pretty good month overall. Uh, I will be doing Rockman X Dive. I'll still be playing KOF. Uh, in the event that I sell my graphic card, I might try to get Mei Li. I think some people would like to see some footage of her. But I'm kind of like uh, apprehensive because they, they just added that whole raid thing. And uh, that just looks like total whale territory. <laughs> a lot of people are complaining about how the game is getting like less and less free to play, and they're not even really trying to hide it anymore. Uh, like I said, I, I don't mind spending money on service games. I, I definitely spent a ton on Closers and DFO, and I spent a decent amount on PSO2 as well. Like I don't mind supporting, you know, free service games. Like I run a small business myself and you know <laughs> as much as the comments help and things it's the, the patreon is definitely one of the things that allows me to keep uh you know getting new games like this every month without fail like i understand that money is required to run a business and to keep a service running but it also needs to be fair for people who do want to support the game but also don't have tons and tons of disposable income i definitely don't so uh i don't know how much longer i'll be playing it uh i'm kind of like wanting to see what's going to go on with the global version uh that game like ironically is actually pretty uh like language barrier uh friendly because uh, pretty much everything is translated on this wiki here like you could just run this through google translate and pretty much get an idea of uh, everything they even have like uh like uh, evaluations for the characters to let you know if they're worth getting and whatnot. Like uh, you can see Mei Li here is ranked 92 out of 100 points, and uh, she has a 2.5% uh, drop rate, which for this game is crazy. Uh, a lot of the best characters are a 0.3% drop rate, so you're basically never going to get them unless you wail like crazy. But there's a lot of really nice resources on here. I know even when the game does come out uh, globally that I'll still be using this site. Anyway, uh, that's what's going on for now. Uh, there's not really a whole lot else going on this month. Uh, the rest of this this year honestly looks pretty barren. Uh, I will be getting Mori's Rochi 4 Ultimate, but the problem with that is, like I said in my uh, my community post, is that uh, I don't have the PS4 version, and uh, it would take me a ton of time and grinding to get it like to the point where I could actually explore the new content. So I won't be doing that on release. Uh, the rest of this year, for me, honestly looks pretty barren, so I'll probably be playing a lot of smaller stuff, which is why I'm kind of trying to rotate in some service games. I think people actually do like watching service games from time to time uh, when there's nothing really going on. Uh, there's some new developments with DMC5, a community edition as well. Uh, a lot of the early access games I was playing just kind of like stopped updating, like uh, especially Bloody Spell. There hasn't been an update for that in like almost two months. Um, corridor of time, the, the development team just straight up disbanded and they just basically stopped supporting it. So that's kind of been a, a problem as well. Uh, I don't know what will happen with Ruby City Girls, but I do want to do some more speed runs with that. Uh, there are some mods as well that I'll be looking into. So that's basically the content for this month. Uh, I'm sorry it's not super in-depth. Uh, this time it's honestly not even an issue of uh, 
of money. Like I said, I can easily afford everything I just mentioned uh, in this video <laughs> uh, by selling my GPU. Even without selling it, I would still be able to afford it. But there's just like uh, not really a lot of incentive for me to get East 9, especially since I haven't even finished East 8. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and post my links in the description. I would like to get more backers. I have lost quite a few lately. Uh, luckily, I'm at the point right now where I've got most of the equipment I need, but I would like to have a little bit more of a security buffer in case more releases are announced. Uh, obviously, TGS is this week. Uh, there's supposed to be a couple things. Uh, I know that we're going to hear about Warriors Road 2 4 Ultimate. We'll probably get the first gameplay. Uh, there is going to be a Psara event, but basically they already said that it's mostly going to be about the mobile game. However, it seems like they may announce something. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of at the point where I would honestly be happy with the Sumeragi port. Like, if they put that on Switch and then just localized it, or ideally even PC, uh, I would definitely be happy with that. I think the Switch could easily handle it. Uh, you know, the game ran run at 60 FPS or ran at 60 FPS even on PS3. Uh, the MT Framework engine in general takes a lot of technical sacrifices to run the game at 60 FPS. I, I can't see how the Switch could not handle it if they actually put ample effort into it. So uh, hopefully we'll at least get something. Uh, if it's all going to be about the mobile game, then it's just going to be a major buzzkill. But there should be some other cool smaller games announced as well. So I'll probably do another, like, uh, project forecast on once TGS is over at the end of the week. Thanks for watching. Peace.